This tool is brilliant. Now, I know this is not the way to start an unbiased tool review, but I have to tell you from the get go, I'm really excited because this is super. Don't worry, we're not just reviewing this. This is half the video. The other half, we're gonna take a really old rusty logging saw Using this, putting it through its paces, we're gonna make something really cool out of it. Quick basics on this. If you haven't used a Shinto Rust before, you're missing out because it blows all of the other files and rasps you have out the water, my opinion. I'm gonna pop a description to this exact one down in the description. So if you wanna pick your own up after watching this, dive in, have a look. On one side, you've got the heavy abrasive side with the larger teeth, and on the other side, you've got a finer tooth side. Very simply, it cuts on the push stroke because that's the angle of the teeth. Although in this video, you're gonna see me doing it both ways because I just can't get out of that habit. There are a few things to take into account when using this. And as the video goes on, I'm going to show you as we go. So let's put this through its paces. Before we can actually get cracking with the file itself, we've got to go in and strip down this saw because it was in such a terrible state when I got it quick history of it, it was just in an auction lot that I randomly picked up, didn't see it on the listing and didn't have a clue what I was going to do with it. But once it was taken apart, scrubbed down, stripped down, it's actually starting to look quite nice. I wanted to be really, really careful to keep some of the patina on this, especially on the blade itself. The hardware was really easy to clean up just with a drill and some sandpaper, give it a spin. And then for that added wow factor, I just wanted to take it to my honing compound and polish it up. Bit of lacquer on the handle gave it some shine, but the blade itself was just elbow grease with vinegar and some sandpaper. Now I confess, when I started this project, I had absolutely no idea what I was actually gonna write on the sign. I figured the name of the channel was probably the way to go to start with. So I just popped some letters, printed them out, glued them to this nice piece of maple. And then this is what led me to use the rasp in the first place was, I've tried so hard to get them close with the jigsaw, but without a bandsaw, it's really difficult. So I just cut around them, figuring I'll shape them later. And the shaping process was the biggest pleasant surprise that I could have had because I thought honestly that I was gonna be there for days with my normal set of files. You take the Shinto rasp to it and suddenly all of the extra wood is falling away and what you're left with is the basic outline of every letter. Sure, you need other tools. You need to drill out the insides. I turned to my saw a couple of times just to clear out some of the extra stock in the middle. Now, I'm aware while you're watching this that it's hard to get a close up and to spend the time showing you on every letter just what a good job that this is doing. So, I've set up this little segue, if you like, where I'm actually just going to show you the brute force of this file. Rasp. Rasp file. Check it out. So, what we've got here is an off cut of the same wood that I use for the letters. So, it's the same hardwood. I've got it at a weird angle so you can see what I'm doing, but it's not going to slow this file down. I've just drawn a line. Let's imagine we're doing a round over and I'm just going to go to town with the rough side of the file and show you how quick and what results you can get from it. So we're going to go straight in with the rough side and we're going to take off quite a lot of stock here. So we're already halfway there. And I know this is not what you would use this for. I'm just showing you the sheer power that it has to remove wood. And I'll show you the finish afterwards. Admittedly, it's a little hard to do one-handed. Now you show me any other file that can do that, that quickly. And let me show you the finish. I mean, sure, there's scarring in there. 
but for the amount of wood you've removed, that is pretty impressive. Now we flip it over and we go in with the smooth side. Now that was again, 30 seconds of the smoother side, just going around the contour. Let me show you the finish on that. Most of the heavy grooves are gone. You've got the fine grooves in there, but to be honest, going in with 100 grit sandpaper, you're probably gonna clean that out really quickly. And that is basically how I've been able to get these letters down from the rough cut with the jigsaw so quickly down to something that I just need to smooth off with sandpaper. And if anybody's thinking of doing a project like this at home that is so similar to this, don't be afraid to pick one of these up and really go to town on that wood. That's what makes this project so beginner friendly is really the rasp file, a saw, a drill, and maybe some fine detail needle files is all you really need to get this done. You can make your own sign in a matter of hours. Now, confession time, I may have used the wrong type of glue here. It was, Pritt stick would have done the job. This stuff was super strong. The only way I managed to get the template off easily was just to sand it. I did take the time on each letter to give them a tiny little chamfer round over with a little bit of sandpaper. After all, you're gonna see this in every single video probably. And there's the little sneak peek. And that's when I realized I needed another side to it. So I printed some more stuff and went through exactly the same process again. Don't worry, I'm not gonna show you it. This is just to give you an idea of what I wanted to do. Uh, the letters came out exactly the same as before, but I wanted to do this nice play button as well and make it slightly different. I had some leftover purple heart veneer from a project a year ago, and I thought if I can countersink the play button symbol itself, then I could put a nice feature of some purple heart inside it, and hopefully it'll just bring out the extra detail. And there it is, the second sign, and possibly the most important sign. Now what we have is a double-edged, vintage, logging saw, sign, double sign, double-sided sign. It's catchy. You might notice here the channel name really does need that S. It's a completely different uh, channel otherwise. Now, double-sided tape. I didn't want to ruin the saw completely by gluing the letters on forever, so double-sided tape is good enough for me, and that means that the saw is actually in still usable shape. And just like that, it's done. And here it is, to start making a new sign. I did it in exactly the same way as I did that sign up there that you've seen in every single video, and hopefully you're gonna see this in future videos. If not this side, you are most certainly going to see this side. The real hero of the story is this amazing little rasp file. Shinto. Shinto? Shinto rasp file. Whatever you want to call it. It does a job and it does it really, really well. Impressively so. So, if you haven't already, there's a reason I made this. But in all seriousness, if you have enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. If you like the rasp file, check the description. There's some other tools down there that you've seen throughout the build. And importantly, if you want to know where the logging saw came from, this video here shows the entire unboxing of the auction lot and there were some serious surprises in there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you over there.